New discovery changed physics forever. Gravity is not a force. Gravity is commonly regarded as a force exerted between massive objects. Putting your weight on a scale is a good example of this force at work. The force of gravity acting on your mass determines how much you weigh on Earth. It's easy to imagine the sun's gravity keeping the planets in place, and we're all aware of how strong the gravitational pull is in the vicinity of a black hole. Gravity is clearly a force, isn't it? What would the universe be like without gravity? So how does gravity impact us? Stay tuned as we investigate this new discovery that has forever altered physics and discover how gravity is not a force. Let's begin with an overview of the topic. The so-called force of gravity is simple to grasp and gravity itself may appear to be uncomplicated, but times have changed and our understanding of this phenomenon has expanded greatly thanks to the general theory of relativity. But first, a quick physics refresher before we dive in. We all know the legend of Newton with the apple and how he became a physics genius. Actually, that didn't take place. When Newton was in a reflective mood, he noticed an apple fall from a branch and wondered why it went downwards instead than to the other side or in some other direction. He reasoned that the attraction between two bodies was directly related to their mass and inversely proportional to the square of their distance apart. To conserve as much energy as possible, the bodies will travel in a straight line. To sum up, Newton thought an apple would fall because of the acceleration it would experience due to the force of gravity. However, because he mistook the force of gravity for a push rather than a pull. Next, Einstein tries to disapprove Newton's theory of gravity. Inasmuch as the magical pull was seen a vital attribute of mass, it was widely believed that Newton was correct in his theory of gravity. This was the notion that survived and masked the truth for the following four centuries, until that is the 1905 presentation of the general theory of relativity by the Swiss patent clerk and future Nobel laureate Albert Einstein. The extreme nature of his theories made them unfeasible, so others either laughed at him or disregarded him when he challenged Isaac Newton's theory. Though commonly attributed to Einstein, it was actually Galileo who first concluded that when released together in the absence of an atmosphere, all objects will fall at the same rate regardless of their mass. This discovery is central to the theory of general relativity. In order to put this notion to the test, Apollo 15 astronaut David Scott conducted a now famous experiment on the lunar surface. A hammer and a feather, dropped by Moonwalker and astronaut Scott at the same moment, fell to the ground and made contact at the same instant. That all objects, regardless of size or composition, behave in the same way is known as the equivalence principle. It's because there is no force acting on either object. Therefore, they both fall at the same moment and land at the same place. Following that, Einstein's theory. According to Einstein's theory, gravity is not a force between two massive things. Rather, it is the distorting of space and time caused by the existence of massive objects. Hence, absent an external force, massive objects will continue moving in a straight line. According to Einstein, there is no such thing as gravitational force since space pushes down on things instead of pulling them toward more massive ones. Einstein proposed that the presence of matter distorts not only space but also time. Any object in space distorts this fabric of space-time, which we call space-time. The term space Space-time refers to the fusion of the three spatial dimensions, length, width, and height, with the temporal dimension, the fourth. The greater the bulk of an object, the more it distorts the surrounding space. Apples fall from trees and planets orbit stars because they are moving along curved paths through space-time, according to Einstein's theory. Those arcs are the gravitational pull. As an illustration, picture the Earth superimposed on a space-time grid. The mass of the Earthward space-time manifests as a gravitational well, which can be observed. You, I and even the moon are all pushed down and towards the direction of this mass by its gravity. Similar to Earth, the moon's mass distorts space-time, but unlike Earth, the moon is not pulled toward us by our gravitational field. It's more akin to an apple dropping from a tree, though. The mass of gravity well produced by the sun is what prevents the entire solar system from disintegrating into the void. Adding to that, gravitational wells. The way spacecrafts have been launched also sheds light on the operation of the gravitational wells around the planets in our solar system. Engineers exploited gravitational slingshots created by warped spacetime or the gravity of other planets in our solar system to propel spacecrafts in a different direction from their launch path at a faster speed. The closer an object is to the planet's gravity, the faster it will start to move. Ultimately, the curvature and bending of spacetime is responsible for the mutual attraction between cosmic objects. They will speed up as they draw nearer to the target mass. Next, gravitational field. 
Isn't that force we are talking about earlier the gravitational field a force? Every massive object in the universe is surrounded by a field of force called gravitational field. When compared to Earth, the Moon's gravitational pull is far weaker. Earth's mass causes its gravitational field to be considerably stronger than that of the Moon. But even in the vastness of space, the pull of gravity can be felt nearly everywhere. It would be simple to assume there is no gravitational field at work in orbit around our great blue planet if everything was simply floating in space above our heads. But the Earth's gravity is felt even at the International Space Station. Gravity in orbit around a planet is remarkably similar to that on the surface of that planet. As a matter of fact, it's roughly 90 times stronger in space than it is on Earth's surface. In other words, if you weighed 100 kilos on Earth and had access to a space ladder that extended all the way to the space station, you would only weigh roughly 90 kilograms in orbit. However, if there is a gravity all around Earth, then why do astronauts appear to be weightless? Everything, including the International Space Station, is falling at once in the vacuum of space, giving the illusion that the astronauts are gliding through the air. Microgravity is the term used to describe the seemingly weightless state in which humans and other objects find themselves. Moving on, massive objects and space-time. If all objects fall in the same way, regardless of mass, then a space traveler free-floating in space, distant from any gravitational source, and a space traveler free-falling in the gravitational field of a big body would have the same experience. In reality, the International Space Station and all of the satellites in orbit around us are constantly descending toward Earth at a rate of almost 28,000 kilometers per hour due to the strong gravitational pull of the Earth's poles. Evidence that the massive objects do distort space-time exist in a few different forms. Your body and other objects are attracted to the ground because of the 9.1 meters squared of gravitational acceleration at the Earth's surface, which has nothing to do with the interior of the planet. The mass of any object causes a bending and curving of space-time, which is gravity. Therefore, if you managed to travel to the center of the Earth, you would find yourself in a weightless environment. Because the center of a massive object is outside the space-time curve, you could theoretically float around the Earth's core without feeling any gravity. However, when you made your way back to Earth's surface, you would feel the Earth's mass increasing the curvature of space-time and, as a result, the pull of gravity. Of course, sending a probe to the Earth's core would be the definitive answer to that question, but there is another technique to demonstrate that gravity causes space-time distortions. Next, gravitational lensing. Gravitational lensing is one such phenomenon. Gravitational lensing occurs when a massive celestial body, like a galaxy, warps space around itself, causing light to bend visibly around the object. This effect is invisible to the naked eye, but becomes apparent when viewed through a camera lens. The gravitational lensing effect has allowed us to discover galaxies and other space objects that we would have missed otherwise. One well-known example is the Einstein's cross, which depicts a gravitationally lensed quasar near the galactic center. We can see four separate quasar pictures in the foreground because the central galaxy is exerting such a strong gravitational lensing effect. Even if Einstein appears to have gravity nailed down and general relativity has a lot going for it, here's the big catch. It cannot coexist with quantum mechanics as it is now formulated. As a branch of theoretical physics, quantum gravity attempts to provide a quantum mechanical description of gravity. There is currently no such hypothesis that enjoys widespread acceptance and can be corroborated by experience. However, scientists also know that Einstein's theory fails completely within a black hole. Finally, Blue Star SO2. Three of Hawaii's largest telescopes were utilized to observe the Blue Star SO2 as it came within 16 light years of the Black Star Sagittarius at the center of our galaxy. A black hole, according to Einstein's theory, would distort space time and cause the star's light to have a longer wavelength. Light waves would lengthen as the black hole's intent gravity drained their energy causing the star's light to change from blue to red, just as Einstein predicted. If the star had glowed a different color, it would have hinted at a different model of gravity. They predict that in the next decade, the theory of general relativity will be stretched to its limits, and another genius will come along to show us where Einstein was incorrect. Let's keep our fingers crossed that another 300 years won't be necessary. If you liked this video, please leave a comment telling us what you think the future holds for our understanding of gravity. Here is where we'll share the latest and greatest discoveries about our fascinating universe. You should subscribe if you want to get updates. Thanks for watching.